So I'm told I'm supposed to use the microphone because apparently, huh? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Um, apparently our camera is very hard of hearing though and if I don't talk into the microphone, the camera can't hear me. So, um, how was Flock? That's what we like to see. So this year the council uh, put directions on Flock that said we want this to be more do oriented, whether that's writing, coding, hacking, planning, strategizing, or literally just sitting down with somebody for a couple of hours to unblock things. We wanted to see the project try to move forward incrementally. I mean, we're not necessarily gonna take any binding decisions. We don't necessarily expect production code to have come out of this event. But I think that in all of these sessions, many of them several hours long, we've actually accomplished a whole lot. I know in the sessions that I was able to attend, so much got done. Um, and in fact, I, I might tell you about some of it. Because we're gonna do readouts now, which is a fancy term that Josh Boyer introduced me to, and then he proceeded to not come to Flock, so he's not here to explain it. Um, no, and we really do miss that he's not here. Um, but the general idea is, on the first day, we all stood up and we said to everybody what we hoped to accomplish. And it gave us all an opportunity to find out about parts of the project we might not know about or keep up with. And now on the last day, we'd like people to stand up and tell us what we did accomplish. Where are we going? What are our next steps? Because it'll give us an opportunity to figure out what we want to keep a closer eye on that we might not have noticed before, or how things are going to intersect in the future so that we can be better prepared and plan. So with that in mind, we look forward to seeing all of you up here. We, all of you, you see. But, but in the spirit of good leadership, Matthew Miller is going to lead by example and be first. So Matthew Miller. My primary recap is this slide, which is an updated version of the one from my talk, where I had said that the rolling average hadn't crossed over the line. Look, now you can see that the green line is over the blue line. So, yay. All right. Uh, everything did not crash and burn. Uh, I feel like I spent a lot of this conference, um, as was described to me, going around to people and collecting little fires and putting them into a basket. So I have a big basket of fires that I'm carrying that I'm going to make an awesome fire tornado out of. Um, really, I think we've got a lot going on. Uh, things are scary, but I think we've made a lot of progress on a lot of those things, and a lot of the things that felt like they were raging brush fires before uh, we at least have plans to handle. So I think this has been very productive, even if we're doing flock during what feels like hard times for Fedora. Uh, so that was great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about things, and I think we're going to have a really nice release, maybe a little bit later than the schedule planned, because we still don't have a compose today. but. Uh, Every, um, I think yet another thing that was broken is now fixed, so steps forward, we'll see how that goes. Um, I really want to thank our sponsors, uh, Red Hat and RHEL, OpenSUSE and Capital One for making this possible, that is very important. Uh, the local team who helped organize, uh, yes. The local team who helped organize this location, that's Sully and Mo and Dave Cantrell, um, and David Kentrell, sorry, Dave. Um, and also the people who helped run the event here, Brian and Jen and Jenny um, and Spot. Um, that obviously everything would have fallen apart without that. Steve Gallagher doing logistics and everybody who volunteered for video. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, there's my recap. Who wants to recap their session next? Uh, all right, Steve, awesome, thank you. Morning. So uh, I'm not specifically recapping my session. Um, I'm effectively recapping a series of hallway conversations that came out of, uh, of that session. So I gave a talk on uh, ways that we can, uh, can pull some things out of RPM scriptlets uh, to make uh, with a specific goal of making uh, virtual machines and, c and container images, image generation uh, more robust. And what I found when I came to the conference, uh, I went through a talk. Okay, I have a question. What is an RPM scriptlet? So RPMs are these uh, magical things that put software on your Fedora system. And they have a 
scriptlets, which are basically little pieces of arbitrary code that RPM can execute when it's installing or uninstalling or updating. Yes, arbitrary code. Yes, this is a problem. Uh, we're trying to find ways to pull that out and make, it, make sure that it's operating on, uh, under SE Linux and things like that. Uh, and what I found was that there, are, there is another team, uh, the uh, welder team, that has been focusing a little bit on, on some of this as well. And so now I have a, a, a set of, a set of uh, research that they've done to work with, and uh, we'll be working closely together in the coming months. So I think we are on track for trying to get rid of our, uh, scriptlets more or less entirely uh, over the next couple of years. So that's, that's uh, good progress. Thank you. Uh, who else would like to uh, give a readout? Bueller? Ah, Dusty. So uh, the session that I did was not quite uh, a working session. It was more of a uh, let's teach people about a new thing that we have called Atomic Host. Um, so basically had people come in. I gave a little bit of a spiel about what Atomic Host is, why it's different. And then I basically had people run, you know, about an hour and a half worth of uh, lab material on their local system or in a cloud system or whatever uh, to learn about all the features of Atomic Host. Uh, I think we had a lot of good, uh, good learning experiences in, in there. A lot of people asked questions. A lot of people really enjoyed the lab. Uh, but I'm also here to pitch it to you as well uh, because you can actually execute this lab on the airplane on the way home. You can do it completely offline and on your laptop. So uh, if you're interested, you can grab some files from me or you can download them from the internet and uh, go to my website. It's actually a Devel version of the website because I hasn't, haven't fully posted the full lab on my produ production version, but if you go to devel.dustymabe.com, you can see all the lab sections there. And if you pull them up on your computer before you get on the plane, you can actually execute it on the plane. So if you're looking for something to do in a completely offline setting, try it out. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of good people that uh, learned and I've had a lot of people that said that they unfortunately couldn't make it to the session, but also were interested. So if you uh, couldn't make it, Try it out. So uh, again, not kind of covering uh, any individual session per se, um, but uh, kind of modularity in general. Um, we had a lot of really good feedback, like really useful feedback. Some of it actually good, some of it just useful um, during the uh, feedback sessions. Uh, I think we learned a bit about how to run those a little better, which is cool. And uh, we've been talking to Mary and, um, and I think we're gonna talk to other kind of the UX people in uh, Fedora land and see if we can make this more of a regular thing where we're kind of rotating uh, maybe UX testing so that people can try stuff out and give us in-person feedback on not just modularity but other stuff, which I think would be cool. Um, a bunch of interesting things we learned. Um, you know, some people preferred uh, some of the ways that Boltron worked over the way uh, the new implementation works. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, pointed out uh, a large number of bugs, uh, some of which actually even got fixed this week, which is super awesome. Um, so I think that was that was really really useful. So I really appreciate anybody who came to the feedback session and, and gave us feedback. Um, so that was nice. Uh, we had uh, kind of our uh, you know kind of long form modularity talk you know from two o'clock till what six or something yesterday. Uh, so I thought the block worked well. I thought that was interesting. Um, I think we didn't do enough offline preparedness. Uh, you know, Dusty. Uh, you know, props to you and uh, to our other summit talks that we've done before uh, for making sure everything works offline. Um, that's, it's really hard. 
um, but it can be really useful at conferences. So I think we know better for next time. Um, on the flip side, I think we got, uh, you know, we had a good attendance and uh, we had a lot of good discussion, uh, not only during kind of the talk that we had, but then also we kind of had a panel session in the middle um, and I thought we got a, a bunch of good feedback there. Um, so that was, that was useful uh, and we really like to see um, that kind of move forward. Um, and I think it prompted a lot of uh, uh, thinking at least, if not some actual progress um, on various aspects of modularity. Uh, I think that's about it. And obviously the hallway track is always useful. Um, but yeah, I think that was uh, my readout. Uh, who's gonna go next? Are you standing up because you're going next, or are you standing up because you're trying to escape? Uh, <laughs> All right. You are welcome. Yeah, so we had a workshop um, that was trying to kickstart kick the next phase of the Fedora documentation project, uh, and uh, by offering away a new approach towards uh, both making the documentation a bit leaner and also uh, making it uh, simpler for new contributors to come along and um, contribute to, you know, in smaller pieces, some more approachable ones, sort of low-hanging fruit. And um, I believe that even though we had a very low attendance, that was the uh, low point of that, uh, we were able to uh, sell the idea to, who, to those who came. We actually got a, a bunch of pull requests out of the workshop as well. And um, I think that uh, we are on a, a really good path uh, towards uh, making, uh, along with the new tooling, making the documentation project uh, a viable thing again, which I think is pretty cool. So. Yep. I will call names, which actually has some of you wondering if I know your name. You can take the podium if you want, or you can stand here if you would like. Hi, everyone. So uh, in IIT and localization thing, currently we are working on a system which actually trans track translations progress uh, for the releases. And we have a demo instance installed at transstats.xyz. So uh, I would like to invite all of you there, have a look there, and uh, actually we are seeking some feedback because uh, we are getting things ready for uh, Fedora 28. So uh, please do have a look. Thank you. It's transstats.xyz. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, so in this vlog, I attended a bunch of sessions on the quality engineering. So CI, CD, upstream first, most of the things. And in the uh, workshop by the Frederick, I did a CI for uh, Lohit Devnagari fonts. So I already had a bunch of test cases, and it's now there in the disk kit. And other than that, I think we had lots of discussion on the localization side. So I will give that John Baptist maybe update on that rather than me. <coughs> From the IT side, uh, yeah, so we had a very good session yesterday and we had lots of discussions. Uh, so I think we'll think for the few things for the coming, before coming flock, we'll have some more update on that. Yeah. So most of the planning for the IT. Yeah. I went to a session on uh, putting tests into Diskit, and it was awesome, so I want to share with people. Uh, there's a cool thing. How many people know that there we have a framework for running tests out of right out of Diskit? Okay, good, like half the room. The other half of the room, uh, how many of you are packagers? Okay, so cool. <laughs> 
We've got a thing that is um, not actually hooked up right now, but will be soon, where you can make a test directory right in Diskit next to your spec file and put an Ansible playbook in there in a certain form, and this is all documented and it is not hard and it's very, very simple Ansible. So if you've never used Ansible before, don't worry. It's like a simple uh, YAML file, basically indented list of commands, and it can run your tests and then tell you success or failure. There's a little framework for doing that, and that's gonna be hooked up to run automatically for uh, tests that relate to Atomic at first and then eventually to other things and it's going to significantly increase the quality of all of the stuff in Fedora, which is very cool, part one. Part two, uh, Red Hat is contributing thousands of tests for hundreds of different packages um, that were previously secret Red Hat tests. Those are now going to be open source Fedora tests, um, which I, uh, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Red Hat, and that will um, vastly increase the quality and stability of Fedora, and obviously then uh, make that a better input for RHEL in the future and other Red Hat things, so um, it's the way things should work, and I'm glad to see it happening. Okay, sorry for taking a second turn, but I just wanted to emphasize that. It was so cool. Um, anybody else who went to a session that wasn't their own session and found it exciting, feel free to come up and tell about it. That would also, also be cool. Um, but I'm gonna go back to Brian calling names. Should I call names? Oh, oh, wow, guilting without actually calling the name. Jan, I apologize. I was really going to make him come up here. So I, you will be next, I promise, on The Price is Right. But first, let's bring down our new contestant. Because I've already told him I was going to shame him publicly. Please, sir. Thank you, Brian. Um, yesterday I was very happy because uh, three of my slides end up on the Telegram uh, canal. So the slide said that we had a very old school car with no colors, great motors, but nothing else. I really believe now that thanks to the Zanata team, we may at least have an update of our software, maybe have some information in our cockpit to, to, to uh, have some real management of the localization in Fedora. I really love what uh, Sandeep did with transstat.xyz. Uh, I think it's going to really improve our process and at least seeing what what's happening. And yesterday, thanks to Brian and thanks to David, I think, we have a fully working documentation system that includes translations. So we have a French translation, Czech translation, and Spanish translation. The whole content works, including the hyperlink and the, the change language button. So this is something we were waiting for one year and a half. So it's something that we did yesterday at one. Thank you, Brian. I'll be happy to show it to you after uh, Jan talks. So I went to Flock uh, with some uh, list of issues. Uh, which uh, I mostly didn't understand why we have these issues, and I wanted to talk to people to understand like what's the what's the problem and how we can deal with deal with it. And I'm quite happy with the outcome because after the vlog, I have uh, or I solved most of the issues uh, I came here with. And uh, for some issues, we have at least some plan how to move on. Uh, so I learned a lot especially about uh, things, how different teams uh, communicate, how they work together, uh, why uh, sometimes they are stuck with, with something waiting for, for some other people. Uh, so I, I learned a lot and uh, thank you all. Uh, I, was, uh, I was talking to because it will help me to understand how things work in the community. Do you all want to see this that we worked on last night at 1.30 in the morning? Yeah. All right. Um, I so um, this is a first on a lot of levels. This is the first time this particular laptop has ever been plugged into a projector. So let's see if that works. Oh, it's broken. No. Um.
Yeah, it's broken. That's awesome. Um, how do I get this to where you can see it? Like, everybody just gave me a different method. Like, seriously. All right. All right, sweet. That's fine. And now my laptop will never be the same again. All right, can everybody see this? Good, okay. So uh, a little bit of background. I should probably move this to the desk mic camera thing. So we've learned that uh, both Adam and the camera are hard of hearing. Um, no, uh, all right. So we had a soft launch of the new Docs website last week, mostly because Fedora Infra is amazing. And we opened a ticket figuring that we'd need to go some back and forth. And the first comment in the ticket was, done. So um, that was unexpectedly awesome. So if you've gone to the new docs site, you've seen something that looks a whole lot like this. So last night, until about 1.30 in the morning, Jean-Baptiste David Denai, uh, Sanki, I should say, and I, we sat down and we pretended we translated a page in the install guide and we figured out how to get it working. This is not on docs stage yet. It will be on docs stage eventually under the rawhide docs. We are not going to mess with F26 because um, we don't want to like hurt people who are actually trying to be users of Fedora. But what we have done is we have actually managed to get the language selector working. Huh? You actually want to see the languages? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> that was a little too much. Is that good? That's what you get. Yeah, if you're sitting in the back of the room, I got, I got nothing but sympathy for you. Um, so we now have a, a little language selector that's specific to the languages that we've played with. Um, I'm not actually sure why Spanish didn't make the list. I think we were just tired, so I apologize to those of you who do speak Spanish. Uh, but we can flip to French, for example, and look, it's in French. See, this is French. I'm told this is French. <laughs> it looks like things that were spoken when I was a child. Um, and we also have something that is in check, and this so looks like where I live. Like seriously, I go to this store every day. Um, they have the best Rolex in town. So um, it, it looks very minor and very small, but to actually get this working, we've had to interface with Zenata. We have had to figure out how to convince ASCII binder that languages exist and that it should consider them when building. Um, we have a couple of issues we'd love people to come and help us with if you're interested. The first one is that everything is driven by bash scripts that were written at 1.30 in the morning. I think you can see where that one's going, so I'll just leave that there. Um, and the second one is uh, we have figured out a process for translating the menus, because you'll notice these aren't in check. Um, and everything after the second paragraph isn't either. Um, but we don't have that working yet. So we know what we need to do, we just haven't gotten that quite done yet. So that's gonna be our next goal, is to get the menus translatable so that we can actually roll these sites. And this will also give us a platform upon which to help the translation teams re-energize and, and increase their contributions to Fedora as well. The last thing that I will do is publicly call out Matthew and I because uh, one of the ways that we're going to help translations is by helping them get a new instance of Zenata. Um, there's been a lot of challenges with upgrading Zenata in the past, and so Matthew and I are going to put our backs in this, and you, you've said this publicly in the hallway, so I'm just repeating. OpenShift. Um, we're actually going to work very hard with the Zenata Devel team and with the various Infra and IT teams to get an instance of Zenata running that we can have a more reliable upgrade process that's not reliant on people having spare time, but is kind of built into their workflow process. So that should get us new features, which will be all of the things that enable what Jean-Baptiste was saying. Who's next? <laughs> Like seriously, who's next? Jared, would you like to be on the magic stage or there? All right. So in the spirit of Flock being a do con and not just a talk con, um, 
based on a hallway conversation earlier this week I was having with Peter Robinson, I, I took some time yesterday afternoon to um, dive into the wonderful world of templates on MediaWiki and fixed up a new ARM SOC template so it's easy for us to, to better document all the different ARM systems on a chip that we're, that we're trying to document there. So, A couple hours of work, but it's nice. <laughs> and Adam taught me what I didn't know about templates, and now he can forget about it. Me too. <laughs> them over to the real box. Next. Everybody who talks gets a prize. My undying love. Oh. Do you need a hand? Yeah, sure. So, so this cable is... Oh. This cable was left in Bass River last night, so if you can identify its color, we will give it to you. <laughs> I took it by accident, but all right. So do you know what this thing is? Because if you don't, then now you know it's a federator. And we built like 10 of these on Tuesday. And they're the future of Fedora stalls and booths. Uh, <laughs> if you still haven't gotten your SD card from me, see me after this se session. Thank you. What it does, it flashes Fedora onto flash drives. You plug one in, you select the spin you want, and it, it writes a bootable image onto the flash drive. Uh, very soon, that's on the arm, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Did all of them get built? Uh, I think like two of them are left. OK, so do we have a plan for how those parts go somewhere that isn't here? Yes. OK, good. <laughs> I, I had seen a box of parts and wanted to make sure it had a, it had a home. Next. You don't have to have a physical prop. Laura. Oh, there's a line. <laughs> okay, so I helped guide the session on the Fedora kernel process review yesterday, and I think it was really, really successful. This is just a brief summary about what we talked about in the two hours. Uh, Don Z from Red Hat presented some details about a new testing initiative that Red Hat is trying to do to help the Fedora kernel. Uh, Red Hat is releasing tests and donating hardware and time to, in the hopes of m helping to improve uh, Fedora kernel test coverage. Um, the goal is to be able to run this all in a CI effort, which I'm sure everyone's been talking a lot about CI for Fedora as well. So this is really beginning to tie the kernel into that as well. Um, so everyone was really enthusiastic about this idea. Um, Props to Don and uh, everyone else for driving for driving this. Uh, this led to some discussion about managing kernel bugzillas, just because there are still only two Fedora kernel maintainers versus um, a lot more um, bugzillas. So there are a lot of discussion about how can we continue to manage this. And I think the conclusion is is that uh, we really really value contributors who take the time to triage and report bugs and work with the upstream um, kernel to get those uh, fixed and basically be able to shepherd those along even if you can't fix bugs thems themselves. Um, we didn't necessarily get a good solution to this just because it's a hard problem, but uh, I, I think what we did conclude is, is that additional CI testing should not increase the bugzilla load too much. Um, the hope is, is that we will still get uh, valuable bug reports. Let's see. Um, uh, we did spend some time also talking about the concept of uh, test gating because with CI you get this concept of being able to gate tests and what exactly that will look like for the kernel. It sounds like there will be some options coming soon to be able for the kernel to experiment with some level of CI test gating. Uh, one of the big things that came out is someone came up with the idea of doing a kernel test day um, like other things like that. So uh, the Fedora kernel test day will be coming up sometime within the next month or some time period shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Um, finally, we did talk about arbitrary branching and how that might apply to the kernel. And I think the answer is for now that no, the kernel is not going to do arbitrary branching just because there is still, um, again, only two maintainers and uh, not enough effort to be able to maintain all the branches. And really for the kernel is that what we prefer is to be able to fix the bugs such that there should be no need to have an arbitrary, arbitrary branch and be stuck on a version for so long. Um, so once again, thanks for everybody who participated in this uh, workshop. And as always, if you have any kernel questions, um, mailing list, IRC, we're happy to hear them. Thanks.
Mark? All right, so outside of the usual hallway track, and hopefully this is mirrored. Get back to the. Oh yeah, well, I mean it's the the old, the old question of how many engineers does it take to get a laptop hooked up to a projector? Oh. Usually. All right. So other than you know the usual, the always useful hallway track and talking a lot about CI and um, upstream first, uh, finally got this running. Um, this is a small app that runs that shows the status of. Um, the upstream first initiative and the initial package list that we're tracking. Um, and it shows the number of uh, ones that are complete, the number of ones are complete, um, in progress, and the ones that have not started. So we still have a long way to go, but... What's the upstream first initiative? The upstream first initiative is the, it has been mentioned, it is the push uh, within Red Hat to upstream test cases. Um, the other thing... Huh? Uh, it, the, this particular initiative is about test cases. I'm not, uh, and that's all I'm, they're the thing that this is tracking. Maybe patches will come out of it, but for now it's just test cases. Um, the other thing that um, I got done this week uh, was a sort of stopgap. Um, the, 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 the current CI system doesn't run tests on everything because they've limited their scope because for good reasons. Um, so I wrote a shim to get uh, some of the new tests running on things that aren't covered by the CI system um, in our existing systems, if that makes sense. Um, it's supposed to be, it's a stopgap so that the, the test can start running um, before uh, the, um, uh, the new CI system is complete. So yeah, that's what I got word done this week. That. <laughs> okay. Hi everybody, so seeing Laura speak um, made me think that I should um, tell people about Outreachy. Um, one of the things that I was doing, uh, so my name is Marina and one of the things that I was doing here is I was talking to Brian and Laura and Amita and a diversity team about how we would participate in, how Fedora would participate in Outreachy in the next round. Um, I co-organize Outreachy. It is a remote internships program for women, non-binary people, and trans people internationally. And it's also open uh, to people of all genders who are people of color in the United States uh, who are underrepresented, from groups underrepresented in technology, such as uh, blacks um, and Latinas. And uh, we're gearing up for a new round. Um, the applications are going to open in a week, so we need project ideas from people if you want to mentor. Mentorship commitment is about five hours a week uh, in a course of the next six months, first during the application period, selection period, and then there are three months remote internships from early December to early March. Uh, we're going to make a call for mentors later, but if you have an idea in mind or if you talk, want to talk more about what type of a commitment this is, uh, please talk to me or to Laura like while we're here or reach, um, re um, email us. And also there are flyers in the hallway uh, and if you know anybody uh, criteria for participants who, whom you would like to see more involved in open source, um, in Fedora or there are like many other open source projects that participate, uh, please encourage them to apply. I'm next in. I haven't even broken out my teacher stare yet. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel your pain on that one. <laughs> You're staring at a column, sir. I was hoping I could take the podium Melissa McCarthy style, but it doesn't seem like it has wheels, so I'll stay down here. Um, the biggest thing I did this week, I think, was to reduce my bus factor dramatically by sitting down with Samantro, who is on our team, and teaching him a lot of the things that I do 
or starting to teach him a lot of the things that I do um, that no one else knows how to do, which was a great thing to get done. The other cool thing we got done this week, which wasn't so much me, um, but the kernel testing initiative, um, Samantha ran a workshop on that and talked to Laura and we and Justin, and we came up with a plan to run kernel regression test days each time we're going to rebase the Fedora kernel. So now instead of having a kernel rebase come in and we kind of test it in Bodhi, maybe we're going to have a sort of process by which we make sure those kernel rebases go through some testing and don't break people's systems, we hope. And on the QA and Relinge side, we found an awful lot of new ways in which 27 and Rohai composers are broken. I mean, we gathered a lot of fire this week, which was great. And then we gave it all to Matthew. He's collecting the fire. So that was lots of fun stuff, too. Thank you. Thank you. Next. So on the outreach side, or more of the outreach non-technical teams in Fedora, there was a lot of awesome things that were happening in different parts of the project. But I think that you could sum this up into a cumulative group with this Mindshare initiative that Robbie Duck has mostly been working on and is the objective lead for, which is kind of this idea of being the glue between all of these different outreach-oriented teams in Fedora. Um, so I just really thought it was very insightful and uh, really exciting to see the work that's being prepared for the Mindshare initiative, and I think it's something that is definitely relevant for a lot of people. I just want to give a shout out to that session because for me it was extremely valuable. Um, on the other side, we also had the Fedora marketing session on Wednesday, which we covered a lot of things that we know have been problems for a while, and it's a limited group number of people, so we tried to come up with this idea of what we want to try to knock out by the next release plus a few months, up to 2018. And this ended up becoming two things that we wanted to try to do. Uh, one of which is that we'd like to try to have a relationship with people who are doing work with the objectives, like the objective leads in marketing. So that way when marketing goes to prepare the talking points that we create and ideally share with the ambassadors, people who are going to Fedora events and talking about Fedora, and in especially in the context from like the keynote on Tuesday about trying to bring more people to specific topic-oriented events that Fedora has a strong presence at, uh, it'd be very valuable for marketing to build talking points and content for the people who are going out to represent Fedora. Um, and getting that feedback from the objective leads and people who are actively involved with those parts of the project would be very valuable. Um, so we just like to try to have a better relationship with the people working on the objectives and preferably the objective leads as well. Um, the other thing that started in this session and then kind of bled out to a few others uh, was this kind of this idea of data rot in the wiki. So for marketing, uh, we have a lot of pages that will get, I mean, it's, it's the wiki, it's the sea of the wiki and things get lost and it's a lot of manual work that we're doing and there's probably a better way that we could put things in different places and uh, came up about the docs tool chain, about some of the awesome work that's happening with ASCII doc and it had never occurred to us about moving community contributor oriented content that's not technical docs on Fedora, but community docs, how to get onboarded into a team, all these other things into the doc site proper. Um, which to me was like a realization that like, hey, like we've been trying to figure out how to fix some of this data rot and all of this, uh, these problems of losing critical information or having it become outdated in the wiki. Uh, I just felt like it was very it was very insightful for us to think about moving our community focused documentation out of the wiki and into a more static place in the docs and then maintaining it with git. And then that was something that came up in the com op session uh, and it came up in the mindshare session and the diversity session and I, I just think it's something that for us it was very valuable to start thinking about ways we could try to improve our our own documentation for our team, how we're trying to bring people into our sub-project uh, by making those things more easily accessible and visible and making sure that they don't disappear into the ocean of the wiki and they don't, we're not giving people outdated information. So for marketing generally, it was between those two things is we want to try to have a better relationship with the uh, objective leads and the uh, initiatives going on in Fedora as well as trying to migrate some of our 
valuable content that we do use and maintain out of the wiki into the docs. Uh, we also had the ComOps session on Tuesday, which was mostly focused on metrics and data. So we split the first half of that, trying to introduce people about how to get their head wrapped around some of these metrics tools we're using with FedMessage and Data Grepper and how you can actually use them for your own projects to do cool visualizations and data. I think the TLDR for like the coolest part that came out of that. Uh, so if you have an infrastructure environment, monitoring is really important, right? You're, you always want to understand what's happening in, in your environment so you can try to do preventative work instead of reactionary work. And so we have this huge pool of data in FedMessage, and there's not really an easy way to represent that and to work with that unless you know the tooling very well. And so maybe you're familiar with things like uh, Grafana or Grimoire. Uh, so this was an, an idea that was worked, I don't see Sachin in here right now, but so uh, one of our ComOps team members, Sachin uh, Skameth, uh, he's working on moving or creating a Grimoire dashboard built off of some of the Fedora fed message metrics that we're collecting. So ideally, we are going to have to ask people, like if you want to use fed message data for your project, or if you want to understand what's happening there, you don't have to learn all the tooling if you don't want to. But by using something like a Grimoire dashboard to create visualizations, charts, graphs, pie charts, things that you can easily see and understand, and you don't have to know the entire stack to to know it is that you can see, I understand this in five seconds. You don't have to write a script. You don't have to build an application to do that analysis. So like in that side of it, that was really cool. And this is something that we're trying to work on to ideally implement and make accessible for other people in the project. So you can actually, if you're not ready to sit down and write a lot of code to work with the fed message stack, this is one thing that we'd like to try to do to make it easier for other people in the Fedora community to understand what's happening in their own projects. Um, additionally, the, the, the second thing we mostly dove into in the come up session was about the Fedora classrooms, which is this idea uh, we've been doing for the last few weeks. If, if you might be familiar, if you've been around for a while, you might remember them as the IRC classrooms where people are teaching skills to interested people in the Fedora community or to users. Uh, so we started doing that again a few weeks ago, and we had a, like a video conference one on Open Source 101, and we had 75 people show up which was like huge. Um, so what we wanted to do with that is we wanted to try to make it easier to actually teach people skills relevant to contribute to Fedora projects. So we ended up picking on Fedora hubs because we had Sane in the room and we were able to pick his brain on some of these things. Uh, so like what we mostly tried to figure out was like prerequisites for things we'd like people who wanted to participate in these classrooms to know, uh, which is things like how to learn Python or how to learn Git, like some of these basic skills that if you want to bring people into your, into your app, like you kind of got to have that knowledge up front. On the flip side, we tried to identify some of the things that we thought we could try to teach people, like some of, the, especially some of the soft skills I think were really important, like how to interact and communicate with a, an upstream project, like let's say Peugeot or, or Bodhi or Fedora Hubs, like having that communication is still something that's really important for having someone get involved and contribute to your project. Communication is key. Um, so that was just kind of the, the focus of like how we can actually try to take these classrooms that seem to be engaging really well with people outside of the Fedora community and try to enable them to actually get involved, contribute, and do cool things in Fedora. Um, so like for now, our, our test case is probably gonna be Fedora Hubs. But ideally, we would be very, the classrooms team with the join SIG would be very interested in feedback from other people who would like to try to engage with that audience and try to bring more people into your own project if you're doing something really cool in Fedora. Um, I know I'm talking a lot, but I have one more on the Fedora magazine. Uh, we also did that on Tuesday, which was, that was a pretty straightforward session. We have, and for all these, if you want to check out the ComOps notes, these are hanging up on the projector to the left, and the Fedora Magazine ones are down here, and I think that's all of mine. But so for the magazine, the other things that we were trying to work on and do, we gave a quick introduction about how to write for the magazine and what kind of things we're looking for on the magazine. Uh, a while ago, we used to kind of have a mixed audience for what we were putting out on the magazine. It wasn't really clearly focused on a group, 
And one of the things that we tried to emphasize the most in that session was on the magazine, we're trying to reach out to the, the user audience. And what we, what we found after we came up with, we answered the questions, who are we trying to write for? What are we trying to do? When we started doing that, we had significant improvement with how we were engaging with, with, with people. Even now, we're approaching, for this year, our goal is to hit 3 million views on the magazine for this year. We just hit, or we're coming up right on, I think, 2 million. We were at 1.95 million a couple days ago. So I think we might actually have just hit 2 million views for the magazine this year, which is really awesome because we, this is a great, like we've been steadily growing every year and it was a, it was really exciting for us to get here so far. And I think it's because of that, we answered those questions. Who are we writing for? What are we trying to do? What is our purpose with that? So that's the kind of things that we want to have on the magazine. And if it's user-oriented content, especially if you're writing something like, so doing really cool things in Fedora, like Atomic, or you're doing things with modularity, or other things that are really relevant to a Fedora user audience, we would love your content. We would love you to come and swing by the magazine. So that was one side of it, just trying to really establish that. And then what we actually came out as a concrete action and uh, concrete items was just some starter pitches of kind of ideas that anyone who just wants to, to write for the magazine or if you want to write for the magazine and you don't really know what, we have a few starter pitches that we have where you can just check out and see what we have ideas wise uh, and you can jump on something. Like some of these ideas were these, what we call these listicle articles which do really well. If you were watching the magazine this last week, you might have seen three cool ways to trick out your terminal emulator. These kind of things resonate really well with the target audience and they're really easy to write. You write one paragraph or something and you drop a link somewhere else. Um, so that's something else that if you actually are interested in writing for the magazine and you don't know where to start, these starter pitches are something that we have for that and so one of the things that came out of that session was a significant amount of more easier articles to get started on. So that was four sessions. I think that's everything. Sorry to steal the mic for so long. Thank you. Next. So after uh, Matt's State of the Union uh, earlier in the week, um, it was obvious that we had, he actually pointed out that uh, we have a problem with the way the search engine works in, uh, in the uh, uh, marketplace. And so we now have a, a path moving forward to, uh, to change, oh sorry, the Amazon marketplace, so uh, on AWS. That's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to turn this over so that uh, the latest actually shows up on the top. So, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, uh, spent so, spent some great time with uh, Laura in the do session on the uh, kernel, and um, uh, we have some uh, some more fun tests and some bigger communications coming in the f in the future. So. Thank you. Next. You do, because of the camera. No, just kidding. I'm just going to steal it. Hey, I just, so since we had a, a note about the marketplace, the only thing I'm up here to say is um, many people don't know that the Amazon partner team uh, graciously donates uh, a good deal of service to us every month for doing testing of our cloud products and some other various bits and bobs. Also, of course, providing uh, mirror services inside S3 for Apple. Um, so I just wanted to say um, thank you to Amazon and specifically the Amazon partner team for doing that. There was a, there was a guy who had his hand up, but whoever. 
We're good? All right. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things that I was involved with this week. Uh, first off was a workshop. Uh, Josh Burkus and I, as uh, representatives of the Atomic Working Group, uh, put on a workshop of how to become a container maintainer uh, for the layered image uh, rebuild system. Uh, we did a, a really good example of, of a review that was currently uh, has been in waiting for a while and we were able to go through and apply uh, the current um, guidelines to it and actually go through kind of a formal review with everybody. And I think we got like probably about 18 people that paired up uh, and, and went through and created a, a container and then peer reviewed uh, with, uh, with somebody else. Uh, so we had people going through the process, which was great. Um, <clears throat> another thing in the, uh, the infrastructure working group uh, run by Kevin Fenzi, um, I had an opportunity to speak uh, with a few people about um, our plans moving forward to bring Flatpak and, uh, and OCI-based uh, images into the build uh, cycle, as well as a way to host that in our registry. Um, so that should probably be uh, shaken out uh, maybe later today during the Hackfest or uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll, we'll likely see that stuff land soon. Um, <clears throat> also working on the container layered image uh, itself, Patrick and I, uh, had an opportunity to sit down and uh, kind of hack on some things and figure out a couple of a uh, couple of bugs that were causing build failures and and uh, so get that sorted out as well. Um, just trying to trying to work towards getting various uh, things for the atomic working group as well as the uh, container layered image build system moving towards multi architecture. Uh, hopefully, have that that ready to go very soon. Thank you, Jason. So this is uh, some additional atomic container stuff. Um, uh, we had a uh, doc writing session yesterday uh, about uh, writing docs for atomic uh, host and um, some Kubernetes and origin stuff as well. That went pretty well. If you want to join in on that effort in uh, GitHub and the Project Atomic uh, organization, it's atomic-host-docs. Uh, there's uh, issues in there where we have an outline of the docs that we're trying to write and we have issues for each one and in each issue there are like source materials. So it's pretty easy to jump on there and find one and uh, some of the stuff is just a matter of kind of cutting and pasting things and uh, getting it to, into shape and then we can uh, review it and get those docs in place. And then uh, Adam mentioned the workshop about around being a container maintainer. Uh, I was also involved in a talk about uh, system containers, which is uh, kind of a cool way to take a container but run it a little more like you're accustomed to running an RPM, and there's a lot of flexibility in how you run it and what kind of permissions you give, and it can create a pretty easy experience for the, for the user. So uh, there's documentation in the container guidelines about how to do that stuff, and there's also the slides for the talk. Uh, go into some detail, and um, I, I also did a talk about uh, Kubernetes and um, OpenShift Origin on uh, uh, Fedora. There's a bunch of things to that kind of, depending on how much we want that stack to be Fedora-based, there's packaging work to do, there's testing work to do, and there's containerization stuff, and there's documentation like I mentioned also. So for any of this stuff, you can, uh, in Freenode, go into the Atomic uh, room on IRC and just uh, ping us, Dusty. You can ping uh, uh, Dusty or ping me, Jason Brooks, and um, uh, just you know get involved. Uh, there's plenty of stuff to be done, and this is a, you keep hearing about Atomic. This is kind of a cool, hot you know area right now uh, in Fedora and more generally in, it's a lot of fun to work on, so I invite you all. Next. The longer you take, the longer I dance. So um, I was uh, involved in uh, leading two sessions. Um, one was with uh, Patrick on the Atomic Workstation, and um, in we had a lot of good questions in that talk, a lot of interest. Um, in preparation for that talk, we uh, updated the docs for how to set up uh, Atomic Workstation alongside your normal Workstation install, and going through that, we found a 
and they worked with Colin on that, and there was a lot of workarounds that will be very good bugs to fix, fix in the future. Um, then uh, also had, there's a session about flat packs, and I've been talking a lot to different people about how we go ahead and get the work there um, deployed and have a good plan with Adam and with Randy Barlow about how we're going to move these pieces into the Fedora infrastructure and also had a really good conversation with Jan Kaluja about how we're gonna make Freshmaker support uh, flat packs and that's something else we have to keep on working on. Dennis? I actually didn't give a talk for the first time ever, and it was kind of an interesting experience to just participate and take things in rather than try and you know, provide a bunch of feedback. But I did manage to fix Delta RPM creation for Fedora 26 updates. So hopefully that'll make a bunch of users happy. And I spent a lot of time talking to people about changes that are going on that are involving like release engineering. So I have about a list of 100 odd things to add to the backlog of 300 odd things. So there's gonna be a lot of work that needs to be done. And so, you know, people that want to see an effect change in how we ship and deliver, come and you know, see me and figure out how to get involved to make things better for everyone. Next. So Adam, then in B. Also, I haven't heard from anybody in design or diversity, and I remember we had a lot of sessions on both of those, so be warned. Adam, thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, Adam, uh, I was here for ma mainly for modularity, and like we already spoke about it, we got many good feedback that was pretty useful. And I think the most benefit was that we had many people from Brno here meeting other people, and that makes any future work much easier if we know each other in person. Um, one session I did that was, wasn't directly related to modularity was a discussion about splitting documentation from the code on package level, and we spoke with Mr. Tips, and yeah, we figured out a way how to do it in the package guidelines, have the recommendation to make the dependencies smaller. That was pretty good. And also I spoke to many people about, uh, to some people about how we compose the distro in a modularity way. There are many things we still need to think about. And yeah, I've collected many fires. Some of them will go to Matthew, some of them will be kept in my pocket, which you just burn and yeah, we'll fix it and we'll do something pretty cool. Thanks. <laughs> So I, um, myself and Yona, we did a session on uh, Fedora Ambassadors, the future, and I believe we had a good discussion about what is Ambassadors doing, what do we need to change, um, and discuss different ideas, and also um, I think some of that even continued a little in the hallway track. Um, David Cantrell and I were brainstorming and we were talking about different things we could do at events besides just, I mean like at some of the events we've, that I've been to, it seems like every year we just set up a laptop and show off Fedora Workstation or have the multi-image where people can choose different um, desktops and people don't really look at it much and it's just people come by sometimes we'll help them with stuff but we were talking about more interactive um, options like David and I were talking about doing a, um, using the ham radio spin or lab or whatever they're called now um, to um, demonstrate ham radio at a conference because like itself, I know there it's a Linux conference, but there's a large amount of hams there. So we can show off, hey, this is what you can do. You can just download this spin and 
have ham radio programs and even um, we can even bring equipment and show, I mean, actually use ham radio at the conference. Okay, ham radio is all uh, is um, also known as amateur radio. Uh, you can talk. You can talk to people all over the world, and there is also data uh, ways of transmitting data over radio or voice or Morse code, um, etc. Yeah. Sorry, did you? Did you have another question or no? Oh, okay, sorry. You're welcome. Um, and also, uh, another talk I went to that I really found interesting and um, I'm looking forward to when it gets finished is the having Fedora on the Windows subsystem for Linux. I think that could even be a way of reaching out to people that use Windows and say, well, you don't want to actually install Fedora? Okay, fine. Run Fedora on top of Windows. Yes, it's not as good as running Fedora. I mean, on just as your base operating system. But it may be a way of getting them to try Linux and then maybe they'll decide, hey, I, I like this. I want to actually try it. So... I think that's all I have to say. Next. No. Oh. For, for the record, uh, Nick was thanked because he ran the ham radio licensing session. And the GPG signing session. And the signing tests with GPG keys for ham radio purposes session. Uh, so yesterday we had a diversity session. Uh, we, uh, in, my, uh, in our mind, we were thinking that we will come up with the events we wanted to do. But other than that, the list of the events, we got very brilliant ideas. Like the, these events can be in collaboration with the local communities, like Women Who Code, Pi Ladies, etc. Uh, so also we did talk about the impact, how we're going to measure the impact of these Im events. Uh, so the idea uh, in the, was discussed in the ambassador's session as well. So the idea is to uh, come up with certain set of questionnaire and answers so that that can be included in the event reports uh, uh, when we visit some place. And we, we, we can evaluate with the imp uh, impact metrics that how fruitful it was. Other than that, we discussed about the budget. Uh, so, uh, really nice of Bex who uh, shared this thing that we need to plan uh, about the budget and uh, it's not limited. We are flexible about it. If there is something which is really uh, impactful and necessary for the Fedora to do. Um, we discussed about onboarding new people in diversity team and uh, what, which all steps we need. Uh, Existing process, I would say, is a little uh, lengthy process and not so simple. So we, uh, we, are, we tried to make it more simpler, and uh, we succeeded in that. We came up with a plan, which will um, soon we will update on wiki pages. We discussed about the diversity advisor position, uh, which is the diversity team representative uh, in the council team. Um, other than that, we also discussed about the diversity survey, which we will be publishing by, maybe by next year. So we discussed about the tooling we're going to use, uh, how we analyze the results, etc. And we discussed about outreach. -y. Um, thanks, Marina, for helping us out in this initiative. Um, here, uh, this initiative is where uh, the diversity team is putting uh, helping out with budget, etc. So uh, everyone, please, um, there will be uh, applications, as Marina already said. Uh, please come up uh, if you would like to mentor someone um, and uh, apply for the mentorship program uh, in the outreach. So, and there are um, the charts uh, with the beautiful writing uh, for the diversity team. So you can read out if you need to know more. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Oh, 
Well, I was hoping that dancing was for you. Uh, I still don't, don't know if I see many of our design people. I'm having trouble seeing in the dark, though, so I won't lie. But I'd love to know what happened with design and hubs. Anyone? Anyone? Well, while we wait on somebody to, to be a victim, uh, Justin's comments reminded me of something. Uh, we tested also last night, but not before 1.30, well, well before 1.30 in the morning, the idea of doing a lift and shift of documentation out of the wiki. And in 15 minutes, we were able to publish to the docs stage a security guide component. So it'll, it's about how to use YubiKeys that came out of our wiki and is now more findable and durable. So it really is an easy thing to do. We probably could have done it in five minutes if we hadn't taken notes and made bad jokes the whole time. But bad jokes and notes tend to drive Linux, so we were cool. Um, next person. Sweet. Run, dancing, my back hurts. Hey, so um, among the various things that happen here, at some point I, I, I helped Mismo um, rebase her stuff on an eight month long backlog of CSS changes on the project she was contributing to, to. And if you know Mismo, you know she doesn't really like Git. And so I got her, at the end of that, I got her to say something like, well, this wasn't entirely horrible. So I'm pretty happy with that, and that's all. <laughs> Dude, you keep walking around. I'm going to make you come back up. <laughs> Is there anybody left from IoT? I know we heard about the ARM SOC documentation, and unfortunately, Peter had to catch an early flight today. But is there anybody who wants to talk about what we've talked about with regards to IoT? I am going to assume all of the things have left. Sir, sweet. We welcome you back to the podium. There was a lot of IoT discussions. Um, most of it at the moment, there's no real concrete plans on any of what we're actually going to deliver because there's so many things we could do and we just really need to focus it down and get a few smaller things moving forward. Um, is there any specific questions on IoT that anyone had? Or just wanted a general, it's, I mean, it's moving along, the ARM side of it is going fairly well. Justin killing 32-bit kernel is not going to help it. Sorry, Justin. No, 32-bit x86. There's some IoT on x86, but... Most of it is on ARM, um, so it's kind of hand in hand. The software stacks that are commonly used in IoT applications are very convoluted, and they bundle lots of things. And like, I, I I personally run Home Assistant at home, and it's all in Python. It's all open, but it's written and set up in such a way that it's doesn't fit into the traditional packaging model in Fedora at all. And it, you know, you, you, you really need to just run it from Git and pull down the bits because of how they're doing it. And it's easier for the developers, but it's really, really difficult to fit into the distribution model. And that is a problem that w at some point we're going to need to address in Fedora is how we go from the developer-centric models of doing things and pip installing and how we make that work in a distribution model. But th there's lots of challenges and opportunities there. Thank you. <laughs> she got the dreaded finger point of the FPL. <laughs> Hello. So there were a couple of sessions for design. Uh, we learned some things. So, for example, Jen did a session on microtesting, which is a UI uh, tool that you use to see if your software is working. 
So that was very informative. I didn't know a whole lot about that. Uh, also, Suzanne did a somewhat similar thing for UI on, uh, it's like more about the research side of it and how you can use the analytics you get from those tests to further your software, make it better. Uh, and then we had a hack fest, that was great. Uh, as far as Fedora badges, it went well, attendance was well uh, was good, and we made a few designs. I managed to get a design as well, but I kind of left the session having more questions than, than answers. I, I mean, I wasn't looking for answers. You know, we're looking to design things and continue helping out using badges, but in some ways I feel as though badges is kind of an older project, maybe not as exciting, maybe not everyone's as excited to work on it anymore. I'm definitely looking for developers to push approved badges or even get a comment back. There's four or five year old tickets. I'm like, is this still relevant? And there's radio silence uh, on that. So that would be interesting. And then uh, to get some more help. But I was also kind of inspired by Matt's talk at the beginning, uh, the state of Fedora, and talking about how we can use the tools that we have or do things differently to further the goals of Fedora. And <laughs> I did design this badge during a block this year, but um, so how we can use you know different parts of Fedora to further the goals. So. I have a good idea of what the goals are, but I'm not super entrenched in the, you know, the development side of it, the ambassador side of it. I'm a designer. So although I speak about it and I, I love it and I am you know, passionate about it, I don't have all of the insight that all of you people have. I have some, right? But I'm here to learn. So anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is I'd like to get a little more passion or like an injection of ideas and thoughts into Fedora badges. Um, so even if that just means, you know, I had this idea, I haven't taken the time to file a ticket for it, do that. A and for the people who are leadership for Fedora, what can Fedora badges do? Where do you want the work to be happening? Can we use badges to make that happen more? And you know that can be a discussion that you have with me. Like email me directly if you need like focus work because although I do work on it every week, it's still contributing for me. I don't have a lot of dedicated time, but I would be happy to make that if there was a solid goal. If it wasn't just a li list of old tickets, like event tickets we make happen, right? Other tickets we make happen. And I like to leave easy open tickets for new badge designers, so I don't go and do those. But I could, but I'm, I guess the point is, I don't feel like there's as much excitement about the project, and I'd like there still to be, and how can we bring ex some excitement back to it? Does it mean overhauling how the website looks maybe? or adding more features in there so that people enjoy spending time on that website. There's, there's stuff there that I think we can continue to grow and improve on to continue to make Fedora great and better. And also, you know, design-wise, what can we do to make that happen? Your questions. I actually have a badges related idea that came from um, previous FK Remy, um, which I think we haven't taken advantage of very much. And uh, some of it could be, what's that? Boots, what? All right, but um, basically uh, the idea was that uh, instead of just having one-off badges for you came to an event, you did this thing, but to have a little series of badges that show you how like 
how to get involved in a, in a different section of the project. Uh, and so if you have um, something like a join process for your team or websites team, it might be nice to think about a series of badges that are like your first contribution, this next level, and a, sort of a, a little series of things that someone can actually follow like, oh yeah, I want to get the next badge. And by following those badges, that uh, makes an easy path to get involved in your project. So I think that's a really strong thing we can do with badges that we're not taking advantage of yet. This isn't really a recap comment. I'm just sticking it in here anyways. Oh, and the, the fun Justin tells me the functionality to do that is there. We just need ideas for which things need to work on those tracks. So oh. it's called Bootstrap. So uh, there we go. Um, so I'd like to, to come back on two events that happened during the, this week conference. Uh, the first one is, uh, so I had the Hackfest on Pagur. Uh, we managed, there was very little attendance considering the, how many great talks were next to it. So we had like five people in the room and just with the five people we managed to get on board one new contributor who has submitted a pull request who I just need to merge. Uh, we managed to, f with Ken Fancy, we managed to fix the, the bug that was known but not reported. So, you know, if you have a bug and that's annoying to you, please report it. <laughs> and so now you can again reply to uh, issue uh, notifications directly by email and your email is going to be sent, is going to be added to the ticket. It wasn't working, but nobody mentioned it, but we knew it wasn't, so we just fixed it. Uh, and we managed with uh, Matt to uh, work on some of the pull requests, which was related to Pagger on this to improve things uh, for all the contributors. So considering how many people are in the room, I'm actually quite happy with the outcome of that uh, the tag fest. The second thing which I would like to come back on is uh, something that Matt has already mentioned. It's the, the Atomic CI effort. Uh, so um, this is something that I've been involved for a few months, and it has been very, it has been a little bit frustrating to because it's been a lot of back be behind uh, work. Um, we were working on the toolings, we were working on making things happen, but nowadays we have something to show for, and we have been able to show them during this conference and see them well. This is what we have been working on, and this is how it's going to influence the entire project. So I'm very happy that this is finally something that's coming out and that's something that we can actually show and, and you know, ask for feedback and discussions and see how we can improve things from the current state. And I'm also, so I'm also standing here to tell you that if you're a Ferro Atomic package maintainer, we'll be coming after you to help you get the test on. Um, basically, in the, in the coming months, uh, we, there is a, ded a dedicated uh, group of person that will be working on helping the Federal Atomic Package Maintainer to get test on uh, to get test added to the disk it. So if you're some if you're interesting, come to see us. Uh, we'll help you. If you're not interesting, we'll be coming to you and try to convince you otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Matthew, do you want to give us some closing remarks? Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm glad that session went well because we were a little bit worried because um, when we were planning this flock, we thought we should have an awesome recap session. And then we put it on the, on the schedule and then we didn't really do a good job of reaching out to session leaders and various people saying, oh yeah, remember, please think about doing a recap. So thank you everybody who came up here at the last minute and did it anyways. I think that worked out really well. Um, Kind of related to that and also related to the badges. Uh, in previous years, we've had badges for Fedora uh, for speakers at uh, Flock, and this year we decided we wanted to have just one badge for everybody because this is supposed to be a uh, hack fest where just because you're up in front of the mic um, doesn't make you super special. Everybody here is very special for being part of the Fedora project, and uh, right, exactly. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, when I was uh, at the beginning, I should have started with thank you for everybody for being here and for being part of Fedora and making Fedora uh, what it is. And I am just always so grateful to be part of this awesome community. And don't dismiss us because Brian has more logistics stuff to say afterwards. But again, thank you, everybody. Uh, I apologize. I called Matthew up and Jens was actually standing and I did not see you because it's very dark in the back. And so you have been outed by one of your good friends and now you have to come up here and talk. 
I have eyes everywhere. So I, I apologize. I did not mean to, to skip over you. So, um, yeah, yesterday we had um, Fedora internationalization session for about 90 minutes. It was quite a small session, but we had we reviewed the Fedora changes we've done since Fedora 24, and um, also yeah, discussed a few interesting topics like what to do with lang packs, um, how how we can improve the user experience there, um, and yeah, also some of the other hands-on sessions were pretty useful, like Atomic Host uh, 101 session by Dusty was really good. I thought um, helped me to understand better. Uh, maybe how we might approach some of the internationalization issues for um, yeah, um, that. And also the modularity testing was quite nice to play with that. And I think maybe that also the modularity might help with the Langpax uh, handling. Um, we could have different profiles maybe for workstation or atomic and so on. So, um, and what else do I want to say? Yeah, it's, it's my first uh, Fedora conference in the US and I really enjoyed it. I think this new do session format is really good, so I hope that'll continue. Um, yeah, also a container packaging session. I made a Pandoc container, which probably I'm going to submit. Um, I think that's more or less what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yep. I have no other announcements other than Matthew is walking back up here. So I'll briefly say expect a survey, which I'm saying publicly so that I'll actually do it. Um, it will be short and sweet, but the goal will be to collect some feedback to help the council uh, make further decisions about Flock in the future. Um, I'll give this to you just a second. I'm going to remind people that if you do need a ride to Boston Airport, we've got three people who are willing to do rides today and a couple who are doing rides tomorrow. So see uh, David, Brendan, Spot. Um, and probably lots of other people who are nodding at me like Jared. And so. Basically, if somebody's jangling keys, they've probably got a seat. Um, and I turn it over to you, sir. Yeah, no, I thought of more things. So sitting there looking at the back of the video camera reminded me, hey, yeah, this is all being recorded. And while we've got like what, 150, 200 people or whatever here, uh, obviously there's a lot more people than that involved in Fedora. Um, you know, thousands of people every year and not everybody could be here. Um, so let's make sure that we talk about what we did here in the rest of the community and when these videos are available, um, share them as widely as possible. We're also going to have a short little marketing promotional video made up from the, the official photographer. Um, share that around, spread things, you know, spread the love, that, that kind of thing. And again, thank you all for being here. <laughs>